Well, good morning. Oh, I think we can do better than that this Sunday morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, there we go. Welcome to First United Church this morning. Those joining us here, those joining us from afar as we gather to worship once more our God. As we come together this morning, you may be able to see or may not quite yet, but you have heard them practicing perhaps in the background. But today we have with us Kathy on the piano. Thank you for being with us, Kathy. Diana always leading us, and Carl Mathwig's here on trumpet and voice. And did you, you got any other instruments in that bag that you're going to? Okay. Uh, and of course, we're so thankful for behind the scenes, Amanda and Ayla making this work, and all of the volunteers you met on your way in, and who have prepared fellowship for us as we join together this morning. Our gathering hymn to truly gather us together is... Not one we have to stand for unless you'd like to, but it's made for us to just have some moments to come together for those who may be still getting here, for those who may still be joining us online, or for us even who need some time to gather ourselves before we begin worship. Our gathering hymn this morning is Here, O Lord, Your Servants Gather. It's from the Methodist hymnal number 552. Here, O Lord, Your Servants Gather. As we continue in our worship, let us rise as we are able, in mind, body, or spirit, and join in our call to worship together. It's inspired by Psalm 24. Words are in your program and on the screen. Who is the God of glory? The Lord of hosts is the God of glory. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the God of glory may come in. Who is the God of glory? God who made the earth and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For God founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? 
those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, and who do not, do not swear deceitfully. So who is the God of glory? The Lord, the Lord of hosts is the God of glory, the one who blesses us and is our God of salvation. And let us continue worship now by praying our prayer of invocation together. God of our creation, we long for your presence among us. We have altars and pictures and decorations aplenty. We sing songs and pray prayers and hear your word. We worship in all these ways in the hope of growing our connection, feeling you near, and offering you praise. So as we gather here today, grant us your spirit to open our hearts and fill us anew with joy straight from you. Grant us the courage to exclaim, to shout, to sing, to dance, to sit silently, to be here and go there, to be your hands and feet to a world that needs you more than ever. That how you greet us, fill us, and love us here is how we could be present to our world. Through Christ, our risen Savior, we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn, then, is O God in Heaven from the Methodist Hymnal number 119. I don't think we've ever done this song before, so this is a new one for us. You may have thought our gathering hymn was new, but we've done that before. So this one is new for us, so I'm going to have Kathy play through it once, just so we can get the rhythm for it. And then we will join in singing O God in Heaven from the Methodist Hymnal number 119. Let us join now in a moment of confession together as we confess both our individual and our communal sins as we pray together this prayer of confession. Righteous God, you have created us in your image to reflect your holiness. You have affirmed the goodness within us, yet we struggle to be the people you call us to be. You have given us the guidance of the law and the wisdom of the prophets, and the gift of your presence. Still we struggle against the pull to go our own direction without your counsel. We fail to extend the grace and compassion you give to us. So forgive us, God, and be merciful in your judgment. Grant us grace to try again as we work towards centering our lives on you. Amen. Let us affirm the joy to be found in God's forgiveness as we assure ourselves and join in the words of assurance, saying, We affirm that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness, and we must trust in the power of God 
to do the work that we cannot, to meet us at our point of need, and to lead us in the path of new life. Amen. We have begun our worship. We have begun by praying. We have begun by singing and by confessing of our sins and receiving Christ's forgiveness. Let us now rise as we are able in mind, body, or spirit and share the peace of Christ with one another. Can we have the congregation on there so instead of the sharing God's peace sign? We can see the people then, please. Well, good morning to everyone that's out there. Hello everybody on Zoom. It's so great to be able to gather in Christ's peace with one another. And as we gather here with many in the presence of being inside the church, we also gather with peace with all of those near and afar. Those joining us today or those watching online maybe later this week. And as we resume worship and continue worship, having shared God's peace, we now get to hear the words as they are shared with us this morning of the reading of scripture by Janelle. Thank you, Janelle. The first reading is from 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 2 through 5 and verses 12 through 15. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baala, Judah, to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out to the house, out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the Ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the Ark. 
David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. It was told to King David that the Lord has blessed the household of Obededam and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obededam to the city of David with rejoicing. And when there, those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatted calf. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. The second reading is from Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as God chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before God in love. We were destined for adoption of, as God's children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of God's will, to the praise of God's glorious grace that was freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In, the beloved. in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, God has made known to us the mystery of God's will, according to the good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of God, who accomplishes all things according to God's counsel and will, so that we, who were first the first to set up hope, our hope in Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption of God's own people, to the praise of God's glory. And you'll notice that in your program, I flipped it on you that we're going to do the gospel reading right away and then have the children's message. So hear this gospel reading that is from the gospel of Mark chapter 6, verses 14 through 29. King Herod heard of Jesus' ministry, for his name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work within him. But others said, no, it is Elijah. And others said, no, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men and was arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill John. But she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter by Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests, and the king said to the girl, Ask me whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even up to half of my kingdom. And she went outside and said to her mother, What should I ask for? Who replied, The head of John the baptizer. Immediately the girl rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. 
Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head, and he went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. And when John's disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. There's a method for my madness of why I want to do all the scripture together and then do the children's message. And that's that I would like us all, as we are able, to rise in mind, body, or spirit for the children's message today. And I think that it will become known about why we are doing this as we watch this video. So please, rise as you're able in mind, body, or spirit and receive the children's message. Of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will dance like David danced. I will dance. I will dance. Like David danced, I will dance, I will dance, I will dance like David danced. Like David danced When the spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart I will dance like David danced Please be seated. We can go ahead and go to the next slide, yeah. Some of you may be wondering, like, how was that the children's message? Did any of you feel like dancing? 
Well, why didn't you dance? Because we're Minnesotan. Your wife wouldn't let you. I thought maybe some of you were just so taken aback that Richard Gere was playing King David that maybe you were, you know, or maybe you didn't even notice that at all. I could see some, I went in back purposely because I wanted to see, and I could see some people going like, yeah, you know. But that's the children's message because David is dancing before the Lord like we would maybe think a child might do. Hmm? A childlike dance, even if we kept reading on in Second Samuel, some of the leaders of the day are talking about, oh, well, the king shouldn't be doing that. Look at him dance out there in his underwear. He looks so foolish, right? And uh, you're all, you're welcome that I didn't just show up in my underwear today and start dancing for you, because that, that would have been something else, too. <laughs> you might have been dancing to a different tune as you danced right out the door. But I want to talk about joy today because this joy and this elation that we hear about in the scripture and we saw in the children's message and we can feel rise within us, we sometimes tamp down, don't we? And we want to operate by maybe societal norms that we think hold us back or the things that we should or should not do. In their book of joy, this book of joy was written by Archbishop Desmond Tutu and His Holiness the Dalai Lama. At, towards the end of the book of joy it says, Dear child of God, this is at the end they're asked, what's one final thing you want to leave with people? And the Archbishop Desmond Tutu s says this as he addresses the crowd directly and says, Dear child of God, you are loved with a love that nothing can shake. A love that loved you long before you were created. A love that will be there long after everything has disappeared. You are precious with a preciousness that is totally quite immeasurable. And God wants you to be like God, filled with life and goodness and laughter and joy. God wants us to be like God, filled with joy. We need to talk about joy because unfortunately in our lives I think we confuse happiness and joy. We confuse the things that perhaps make us excited with joy. We confuse joy itself. And we get to talk about joy during Christmas time, right? Because it's one of our four Advent weekends. And so we get to focus on it then. But really we should be focusing on joy because as we hear from the Archbishop and as we know in our hearts of hearts, God longs for us to be filled with joy. Joy is a deeper thing. Joy is a wellspring we tap into. Joy is a practice that we must partake in. If we just go after happiness, if we just strive for happiness, then what happens when happiness runs out? What happens when the things that we thought were bringing us joy, but we actually just were desires, run out? What happens when we maybe instill confidence or trust in someone else even, a loved one, a friend, and they disappoint us or they fall short of our expectations or outright hurt us? If we look for happiness in those things, we end up chasing things of our world chasing addictions, chasing time spent, chasing happiness here, there, and everywhere. And we don't actually get it from the well that is inside of us where God longs for us to look. And then we could end up being, you may be thinking to yourself, I was right on this joy train with you, Tony, because I got it in the Second Samuel. I got it in Paul's letter to Ephesus. And then we had this scripture about John the Baptist being beheaded. Like, how does this fit in, right? Well, if we only strive after worldly happiness and our center is not on God-given joy, 
then we can go to the extent of extreme measures to bring about happiness, to the detriment, maybe, even, of someone's life. Maybe our lives. God longs for us to tap into this wellspring of joy. This joy that was planted within us long, long ago at our creation, that is within us, that mirrors God's joy for creating us, right? And this is what David is dancing for. He's bringing the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, and he's dancing about it. He's trying to dance before the Lord, and it's coming from an unnatural place. I guarantee you that when you dance like that, people are going to say, that is an unnatural dance. If you were at a wedding and you started bopping around like that, people are going to say, wow, Tony had way too much food. What did you think I was going to say? When we shout and scream out with joy from the well spot within us of the joy that God has planted, it comes out unexpectedly in wonderful and joyous ways. All right? And we must not confuse joy with happiness. Because let me tell you what was going on in David's life when this ark was being brought in. He had just lost his best friend and brother, Jonathan. The king who he worshipped before he became king and who he went before and played music for to make feel better and defeated a giant Philistine for so that that king could rule in all earnestness and knew that that king was from God, he had also died. David had been in the wilderness for a long, long time, fleeing death. And as the ark was being brought up out of a different town than one of those, and I apologize to Janelle beforehand for all the names she had to read today, but when the ark was being brought up from one of those towns before it actually ended up in Abinadab, someone accidentally touched the ark and died. So David had lost another person right then and was scared to bring the ark into Jerusalem but found out, no, the ark is actually good. This is where God resides. We need to bring this in to Jerusalem. And so brought it up into Jerusalem and was dancing before it. Why do I share that with you? Because joy is not the absence of sorrow. Joy is not the absence of pain. Joy is not the absence of all of life's struggles. Joy is the practice of saying, despite all that, I am going to love as God loved me. Joy is saying, despite our world, which can't seem to figure out which way is up, which can't seem to figure out why we can't have assault rifles, which can't seem to figure out why we can't feed everyone even though we have more riches in the world than we've ever had before, which can't figure out how to get along with one another even though we are all one shared humanity, which can't figure out, insert, you name it there, Despite that world, I am going to love people here still. That's joy. Because joy is not dependent upon happiness or my pleasures being sought and gained or someone having less than me or me having a position of higher standing or of me always constantly being A 10 out of 10 every day. Or me being perfect. hmm? That's not joy. Joy is looking at our world and saying, I am a child of a God. You are a child of God. We, in the joy that God has shared with us, are called to love one another. And joy is saying to our world that no matter what you can throw at me, no matter what happens, no matter what comes my way, we can trust, as Paul did in his letter to Ephesus and is telling them, that we have a Savior 
who was God incarnate, living joy, living love, God's love that is inside of us in a physical form represented to us to teach us about joy, true joy, true love, true sharing. That's joy. And so folks, I don't, if we're Minnesotan, if we're Norwegian, if we're Swedish, if we're insert whatever cultural or societal norm that you have within you, if you feel it in your heart to dance before the Lord, by golly, dance before the Lord. If you feel it in your heart that you're out somewhere and you feel called to do something for somebody, by golly, do it for them. And let our norms and let our societal standards and let everything else in our world that would hold us back from sharing God's love, let that be damned. And let God's love shine out in our world. The joy shine out in our world. Because listen to this. This is how the archbishop finishes his little prayer for the people here. God, who is forever pouring out God's whole being from all eternity, wants you to flourish. God wants you to be filled with joy and excitement and ever longing to be able to find what is so beautiful in God's creation, the compassion of so many, the caring and the sharing. And God says this, Please help me, my child. Help me to spread love and laughter and joy and compassion. And you know what, my child? As you do this, hey, presto, you discover joy. Joy which you had not sought comes as the gift, as almost the reward for this non-self-regarding care for others. When we share our joy with one another, our love with one another, and we don't do so for the sake of trying to be happy. We don't do so for the sake of making ourselves better or to lift ourselves up and say, oh, I helped so many people today, right? But when we do it for the sake of other, when we say, I see you, I hear you, I want to dance for you. I want to dance by sharing the gifts God has shared with me, with you so that you can experience joy. When we do that, we get a gift in return. We get joy. Not something fleeting. Not something that's here today and gone tomorrow. But the deep, true, heartfelt joy that God planted deep within us on the day of our creation. So, congregation, let's dance. Amen.
We now come to a time of prayer that we go join together and I uh, want to lift up joys and concerns that we may have. I'm going to lift up a few here just and just begin. One joy we, uh, I want to celebrate is uh, yesterday here at the church, I did a baptism ceremony for Faye Elaine Olson. They are not here today. Uh, Amber and Clayton, we've seen them in the back before, and you may have recognized them, but uh, they are, I'm sure, resting at home after a very busy day yesterday of having family and friends over. So we welcomed Joy into our community, or Faye into our community yesterday. Yeah, Joy through Faye into our community yesterday, and so let's just lift that up together in a round of applause for I say it this way because I know that traditionally we like to have it as part of a worship service and we like to celebrate with them, but that isn't how everyone comes to baptism. Remember, Jesus was not baptized in a church. And so when we get to baptize others into our community, we must lift that up in celebration as well. Uh, also, a prayer to go with that is that Amber actually had to have emergency gallbladder surgery like uh, two months after giving childbirth. And so that is another reason that they're probably resting today is yesterday was the first time she was up and walking around. So prayers of joy for them, prayers of continued healing for Amber as well. Um, another concern I would like to lift up is that Muriel Paler, please keep her and the family in your prayers, just found out on Friday that she was diagnosed with breast cancer. So if you want to know more details, I've been told, contact Muriel, and she'll share all the details with you as she feels comfortable. But please keep Muriel and the family in your prayers. And then lastly, I want to share one more joy. And it's a little bit of a concern for a parent as well. But Madeline is going to be going to band camp in Bemidji this week. And she was one of how many students to receive scholarship? From Little Falls. So seven kids from Little Falls got to receive a scholarship to go to this band camp. And thanks to all of the work in our community that uh, they do to support the music program. And so we'll be scooting right after the service to take Madeline up to Bemidji to band camp. It's a joy for her Parents, you know what we're talking about when we say it's a joy and a concern for us, but um, congratulations, Madeline, on that. <laughs> Other joys and concerns for us to lift up today. I thought I'd give you an update on my little grandniece, June. She is still receiving chemo uh, treatments. She's living at home now, which has been a blessing, but their house has turned into a hospital <laughs> in a mm. sense. Um, she doesn't like using the, the kind of trach that, that you, you know, when you've seen people when they touch their throat and they can speak through their throat because she has to use a lot of lung power to do that. She likes the other trach, but then she can't vocalize. So they, they switch back and forth between trachs because her parents still always long to hear her voice. Um, I understand that the family has accepted that June's life will be brief. And so at this time, Anything she sees and wants, she gets. Mm. And um, so they're trying to pack in as much as they can for little June. And thank you for your continued prayers for my niece, her husband, and their baby June. Lord be with them. Other joys or concerns for us to share? Prayers for my friend Lisa as she is getting ready to celebrate the life of her father with her family and keep all of her family in your prayers. 
Thank you. So Lisa's father passed away, your friend Lisa. Lord have mercy. Other prayers for us to lift up today. Joys and concerns. Anything online, Amanda? All right, let us join in a moment of prayer. Blessed God, receive our prayers that you have heard. Those lifted up, our joys and concerns. That's what we lift up to you, God, because we know that you long to hear that which troubles our hearts and our souls and our minds, the things, God, that we need prayer for on our earth because we do not know what your will is. We do not know what days we get. We do not know, God, as perhaps just the statement. And yet you, amidst this, long for us to tap into joy that you have put within us. Joy that we know we have an eternal resting place with you in heaven eternal. Joy that we know that no matter where we are or what we are or what we experience, that when we have you as our center, God, we are taken care of, we are looked after, and we receive promises upon promises. That your covenant is not some false or fake or phantasmic document that just appears in our scripture, but that your covenant with us to forever watch over us, to ever make a, forever make a place for us, and to forever love us and fill us with joy is true and is your message of love and hope for us amidst our world. God, help us indeed to center on you that we can bring both the joys and the concerns and find the resting place of your lap where we are held in love. And hear us now, God, as we pray for those things in our hearts which are too deep for words to reach. And hear us now, God, as we join all of our prayers together and sing our Lord's Prayer song.
Amen, indeed. We now come to a time for announcements. I have a few as usual, but are there announcements out in the congregation this morning? I am going to cancel the Ad Council meeting so I can attend Lisa's father's funeral in the cities on Tuesday. We, will, we can communicate by email if there's anything pressing to be de dealt with. Thank you. In case you didn't hear that, we are canceling the Ad Council meeting this Tuesday. If there's any business matters that are pressing that are unaware of the lay leader or the office, please use email to address those. Other announcements for us to share? I've got one announcement that you may have seen when you were watching the announcement slides, which is a good announcement itself, that if you come to church early before we start the service, we have announcement slides that run, and they run through weekly announcements and things coming up and whose birthday is that week and the prayer requests and all of that sort of thing. And it's on repeat, so if you miss one and you sit around and talk for a while, then you'll catch them. And so we repeat that and we begin that beforehand. But my announcement is uh, that on the back table, we have lots of sign-up sheets. We should call the round oak table the sign-up sheet oak table because we have a lot going on back there right now. The normal fellowship time and greeters, if you feel called to that. But back on that table are also two newer ones. One is our twins trip coming up on August 11th. We still have about half the tickets available. And so if you have been waiting to figure out whether you'd like to go, or you've been waiting to invite your friend or family member or that stranger you ran into at Coburn's this week, Please invite them and sign it up, and all of the information is back there. It's August 11th, and we'll leave right after the service, just like we have every other year. And the cost this year, again, is $50. And that concludes your ticket and your bus trip down and back. Yes, that's right, we'll bring you back. So, uh, well, I guess depending on your behavior. If you start dancing around in your underwear, I mean, maybe, you know. <laughs> but... Uh, if that is a hindrance to you, if cost is the only reason you are not going, please come see us in the office. We always have generous people who say, I can't go, but I'd like to buy a ticket for someone who could. So please see us in the office for that. The other sign-up sheet back there that is new is Vacation Bible Schools coming up. That'll be August 5th through 9th. That's for any children that are above age 3. And I think younger than, I want to say ninth grade. 10th grade, 8th grade. I'm, just, I'm getting the down like this. It's like the price is right. Um, the information's back there on the sheet. It'll tell you the ages. But if your child or your grandchild is interested in going, this is something we partner with First Lutheran Church. We have for many, many years, at least as long as I have been here. And, so, and that is now many, many years. So that, again, is August 5th through 9th, and the information is back there to sign up for that as well. Any announcements that I spurred on in people? If ever you have an announcement and you don't want it to be announced, you can always share it with the office. And we also have in our, our bulletin or in our emails we send out and then letters we send out to people at home each week, we list weekly announcements there as well. All right. Thank you, Madeline. How about a round of applause for our microphone runner? We now come to a time of offering, a moment for us to give back out of the ways that God has given us. Remember from the close of Archbishop's prayer, he says that we experience joy when we share joy with others. It's a gift we receive. Well, how about that, folks? When we give gifts, we receive gifts. It's a multi-purpose offering. It's not just giving so that we get that gift. It's what we receive, the truly hidden joy that we could have never known before. And so we have plates out. If you brought your monetary gift, thank you. Your church needs your support. But what are some ways maybe we could think of during this wonderful musical time with Carl and Kathy that we can share the joy God has planted within us with our world? This is offered.
What a gift indeed. Thank you. And now let us rise in our mind, bodies, or spirit in which ways we are capable and join in our doxology together. join now in our prayer of dedication. Almighty and gracious God, receive our humble offerings and the joy with which we give them. May everything we offer bring you glory. Multiply and magnify these gifts so that your light and love can be shared with our world. Amen. Our closing hymn is a video and it is a jazzy video and it is called we are marching and I hope and pray that we can do a little dancing so this is we are marching sing along the lyrics will be on the screen I may even sing it in the microphone and join Diana so this is we are marching yeah crank it up Feel it, come on. Marching in the light of God, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching. Marching, we are marching, oh, we are marching in the light of God. Yeah! Woo! In the love of God, we are living in the love of God. We are living in the love of God. We are living in the love of God. We are living, living, we are living, oh, we are living in the love of God. We are living, living, we are living, oh, we are living in the love of God. Woo! Yeah! Oh yeah, hear it now. We are moving in the power of God. We are moving in the power of God. Come on now. We are moving, moving, we are moving. Oh, we are moving in the power of God. Woo! We are moving, moving, we are moving. Oh, we are moving in the power of God. We are marching, marching, we are marching. Oh, we are marching in the light of God. Yeah, come on now. Yeah, feel it. Woo! Give yourself a round of applause. Come on now. Benediction do we need after that? Praise be to God. We are marching in the light of God, folks. 
We are moving in the love of God. We are sharing in the joy of God when we let loose and we tap into that joy that God has placed in our hearts and our souls. Praise be to God. Praise be to Christ. Praise be to the Holy Spirit. Amen.